Please welcome President and CEO Splunk, Gary Steele. Hi, I'm Gary Steele, the CEO of Splunk, the data platform leader for security and observability. Now, you may recognize me from my 20 years coming to Moscone as the CEO of Proofpoint. Today, I'm excited to be here representing Splunk as their chief executive. Now, one of the great things about both companies, they're both based in the Bay Area, and one of the favorite things that I have that I love to do is to go for long runs. And what I'd like to do is tell you um, about one of the challenges that's running in the Bay Area, which is kind of a bummer, is the hills. Not because they're tough to climb, but because of something known as a false summit. Let me tell you about a time that I was up against one. So I had a couple free hours one morning in San Francisco, and he decided to go run up Hawk Hill, just across the Bay. And I started out with a short distance, thinking I'd just do a short distance into the headlands, but I was tempted by seeing the top of the hill. I pushed myself a little farther to reach the peak. Once I got to that spot, though, I saw it wasn't the top after all. It was actually a false summit. Now, I pushed a little harder, but I was running out of time, running out of water, I headed back. And I didn't reach the peak that day. And I think all of us have faced false summits in the past two years. You think about the number of weddings and reunions that got put off while we were sheltering in place. Or the fact that we've all felt like, isn't COVID over yet? And yet, wastewater plant workers have been testing our waste for evidence of COVID resurgencies. And finally, while there's been an incredible investment across many organizations to improve their overall security posture, we still haven't reached our optimal or peak in terms of security operations. And when I spend time and I talk to organizations and talk about the improvements that have been made through this process of digital transformation and managing through all that and building out security operations, three challenges fundamentally remain. The first of which is obvious, and that's the threat landscape. It hasn't gotten any better and has continued to evolve. More complexity has come about because the attack surface continues to grow. All those great efforts to bring applications to the cloud just created more to protect. And finally, there's lots of silos. Silos get created in a number of ways. Those silos get created by the purchase of new tools. Silos get created for a variety of other different reasons, but it creates an impediment. And honestly, these are a lot like the issues I come across when I go run. You know, I grew up in the state of Washington and on the eastern side of the state, actually. And it was interesting there, um, it's super predictable. It's relatively flat, I knew the terrain, climate was always the same, pretty easy. But what's different here, running in the Bay Area, is climate changes about every mile, so you've gotta figure that out. Um, one left turn, because of all the changes in the terrain, can take what was an exciting run into one that's painful and one to be regretted. And that's really where we are with the threat landscape today, where there's always a level of uncertainty. And I don't need to lecture all of you about what you've seen in the threat landscape, but it's everything from threats of ransomware to supply chain attacks to zero-day vulnerabilities to all of the kinds of things that we've all lived through over the last couple years. Um, it just puts us in a very uncertain position. And I think in particular, we also have this hangover of what's happening in the Ukraine, will, will there be other issues associated with that that affect all of us? We don't know yet. I think it leaves us in a pretty uncomfortable spot. The second big challenge that we see is complexity, and I bring this analogy back to running. Um, it's sort of interesting, people always tell me that oh, running is the easiest thing in the world, you just buy a pair of shoes and you go, well, it's actually gotten more complicated. There's a million choices for shoes, there's lots of kinds of gear, and there's lots of electronics, all which can be great. And you translate that into what we're seeing in the security world, we've been adding tool after tool every time we've been faced with some form of new challenge. That ultimately creates more complexity. Each of those tools has a dashboard, great. It produces a whole set of data, great. How does that all come together in a way 
that doesn't make it anything but complicated. And also you combine with that these broader initiatives to expand cloud initiatives and use hybrid cloud architectures. We've introduced a lot more data sources, a lot more control points, and we've spread the attack surface in a way that's incredibly complicated. Then you couple with all this what has happened with re remote work. Splunk did a um, state of security report that was issued in, um, just, just recently issued, where it showed that 80% of new, th of 80 of organizations responded saying that they actually had to put in new threat detection to support remote, remote access because of all this remote work. So complexity has continued to rise. And finally, we're living with all kinds of silos. You know, I look at the running world and, and the thing that annoys me the most is if I go out on a run and for whatever reason I'm in some location where my watch doesn't connect to my phone or my phone lose, loses all connectivity. And that's kind of what's happened today in the world where we're creating these various data silos. Why do we have them? Well, you have them because you've brought these various tools in, all of which capture critical and interesting information. You also have organizations tra tracking application telemetry that is often captured in a knock, but that oftentimes doesn't, doesn't correlate or combine with the information captured by the security teams. And the answer is not adding more people to this problem. That doesn't work given the talent shortages all of us are experiencing today. And so it's often the case where security teams feel overworked and honest, oftentimes overwhelmed. And so, and that's kind of how I felt when I didn't make my summit to Hawk Hill. I was not deterred, however. I knew that if I was better prepared the next time, I could make the summit, and there was not going to be any shortcuts. I felt like I needed to be better prepared, consult more maps, really get my watch settings right, basically use all the available data to have a better run. And I think that's where we are today with security, where you and your teams are best equipped to reach your true summits when you take a data-centric approach to any operation. And if this was an audience of IT specialists, SREs, DevOps, I'd be saying the same thing. Because at the end of the day, when an alert happens, is it an application event? Did the application fail? Or is, this a, is it a security issue? And either way, at the end of the day, an incident is just an incident. And one of, one of our beliefs fundamentally is that security and DevOps are converging. To ensure that you really have security and resilience across your organization, you need to find a way to ensure that everything's talking so your networks are all connected and that all your data is accessible from your SOC. And these silos that have gotten created in the past where the application environments monitored by your NOC and the data collected by your, by your SOC, those have traditionally been silos. We see convergence in that world. So when you take a data-centric approach, you can drive three critical outcomes. The first of which is into invisibility, being able to see across your entire infrastructure. And that infrastructure can span multiple clouds. It can span your on-premise work and combinations or hybrid environments. With this, you can drive accelerated detection and response. You have all the data in one place, you can make quick decisions, and you can drive great outcomes. And then finally, with all of that, you can improve your overall cyber resilience, including meeting your privacy and compliance initiatives. Now let's take a look at each of these um, in a little more detail. The first of which is thinking about how do you get into, invisi into invisibility across all of your infrastructure. And what's important here is you want to be able to get full fidelity of your data, having it normalized into a common structure so that you can take action quickly. You need a SOC solution that is flexible enough to adapt to new security technologies because clearly we're in this world where we're adding new capabilities all the time. And it needs to be scalable to handle the ever-increasing volumes of data that I think we're all experiencing. And then finally, you need comprehensive monitoring and remediation capabilities 
to secure users' data wherever they reside, whether they're in the cloud, whether they're on-premise, or somewhere in between. And doing all this allows your security operations team to move from feeling overwhelmed to truly feeling in control. Now, let me give you a quick example. Um, a large U.S. Health, health system employs roughly 6,500 affiliated physicians, has roughly 40,000 employees, and they handle 2 million visits per year. Now, through all that, they're obviously producing immense amounts of data. And they chose a data-centric SIM solution as the centerpiece of their SOC. It allowed them to ingest data from any source and continuously monitor across the entire environment to protect patient privacy. Now, what was interesting about this is by installing that, that core level of data, they got some additional uses out of it. They actually used the approach to zero in on how medications were being administered in, in order to guard against potential diversion of controlled substances like opioids. And at the same time, when COVID broke, they saw their attack, the number of attacks increase. So they saw wires, they, they saw attempts to divert wires, they saw more fake credentials, they saw more supply chain attacks, and at the same time, their workers were working around the clock because think health system, they were all working while many of us were sheltering in place. So they put together orchestration and response to ultimately drive workflow that automated all the mundane tasks of their team. So they, they ultimately elevated worker productivity and made the job much, more be much better for their SOC workers. So I think this is a very good example where driving that, that data-centric approach, leveraging visibility, had a great outcome. Now, let's talk a little bit about um, accelerating detection and response. The reality here is you can tackle the complexity of your data silos and ultimately deliver faster detection and response by bringing it all together. Harnessing all the organization's data with the right context and analytics on top of that data enables security teams to get the right insights from the data sources and then couple that with automation of all the mundane tasks. That's really the magic. And I think everyone here is probably on some form of automation journey. And I believe that there's more and more opportunity to drive that automation in, in the days, weeks, and months ahead. Because that's the critical element to give people's time back, to make SOCs more productive, and, and ultimately make security scalable as we live in this very uncertain world. And finally, you know, you look at various, various kinds of customers. Let's talk about Transurban. They're an Australian-based road operator company. They chose a data-centric SIM approach. And they were focused initially on um, driving detection times down. That was their number one focus. They implemented orchestration in response to streamline processes and standardized procedures, and what was exciting was the outcomes that they achieved were amazing. They drove threat detection time, um, time by down by 87%, response time by 94%, and remediation time by 70%. So incredible outcomes on, the, um, on all of these critical metrics. And so, when you then think about overall cyber resilience, once you've achieved the visibility and faster detection and response, you're really in a position where you can drive overall cyber resilience. You know, innovating on process, innovating on technology ultimately puts you in a position where security posture is raised and that resilience ultimately is, is supporting the overall business growth of the company. I think this is where we all want to get to, and it's very achievable in this data-centric world. So here's another great example. Um, the customer is REI. Mike Hughes, the CISO was there, was actually the first CISO at the retailer, and they've experienced great value with this data-centric approach because it allows 
to expand the capability and capacity of the security team. Now, it was interesting, they had adopted a platform by their IT, IT organization where they were looking at data that they could search, analyze, visualize, and then they extended this broadly into their security world, implementing SIM and SOAR, all in the cloud to really empower their security operations team. Now, I'm gonna let you hear from Mike directly, so let's roll the video. What we do in security is we look for anomalies. We look for pattern deviation. We try to find that needle in a haystack. What's really interesting when we start to aggregate data together in a platform is we can now start to project and map patterns back into that data and see what the normal flows look like. And so if you can take away all of that good pattern and everything you know, you can start to surface that one thing that is the anomaly and start to chase that down. Security is not a milestone, security is a journey. And so we have to think about it and we have to plan like that. And that's what we're doing at the co-op. That's one of the reasons making the investment in cybersecurity to expand the security operations center to lay automation in. Those are the next steps within a security program that is continuing to evolve. It was great to hear from Mike and hear about those benefits. So just to recap, the data-centric benefits are into invisibility, being able to see across your entire environment. And I think one of the things that's also important in this world that is oftentimes multi-cloud, oftentimes hybrid, to be able to get access to that data within your security operations team without moving that data necessarily from one environment to another. It's really about having that visibility from central console. With that, then you can drive accelerated detection and response. Thinking through the value and benefits of orchestration and response and how you can drive much of the mundane tasks out of the security operations team. And finally, with that, improving overall cyber resilience, which has critical benefits um, overall in the business. Now, you're probably wondering, did I ever get up the, the summit of Hawk Hill? Well, the reality is I really thought hard about looking at the maps, understood where the heck I was going, so I'd have sure visibility. I made sure that from a d detection standpoint, I really understood um, what the risks were going up. And then finally, hydration, sleep, all those things gave me the right resilience. And I'm excited to say that um, I did get to the top of that hill, and I did reach the true summit by relying on my data and the context that I had in hand. And now I'm absolutely going to extend I, this approach to everything I do. This data-centric approach really is, is life-changing. So I'm, I want to thank you, and I hope to um, hear what your teams can accomplish using this data-centric approach. Thank you very much.